showdown over 5G service. On one side, you have telecom giants AT&T and Verizon. On the other side is the airline industry, and they're, they're fighting over new, faster service that was supposed to be rolled out today until the White House stepped in. We have the safest uh, airspace in the world. Uh, we're committed to reaching a solution around 5G deployment that maintains the highest level of safety while maintaining disruptions, while minimizing disruptions to passenger travel, cargo operations, and our economic recovery. We certainly understand what's at stake for both industries. So the airlines claim that 5G service towers will interfere with planes. Service providers argue they will not. Joining us this morning to help really set the record straight and explain all of this and why you should care is the executive editor of technology, CNET, Roger Chang. Roger, good to see you. Thanks for having me. So, Roger, here's the question, right? Because 5G service already is with us. A lot of us have it, in fact, mm -hmm. on our phones. So what makes the upgraded service, I guess, so bad for the airlines this go around? Right. And, and to be clear, we're still not sure what the exact interference is. A lot of the details are a little hazy. But, but just to give you a sense of what this is, 5G right now, if you can imagine a freeway, the carriers like AT&T and Verizon have built out the faster carpool lane and, and sort of the slower entry lane. And what this upgrade is essentially expanding out new lanes, putting in like the three or four middle lanes to give everyone a lot more capacity, a lot oh. more speed. And so right now, at least around the airports, AT&T and Verizon have said that they're delaying the rollout of these extra lanes. Mm -hmm. And the problem is for a lot of big cities like New York, where we live very close to these airports, having these, these bands, these exclusion bands, where they are right now holding off on, on rolling out 5G means that for a lot of folks, those, those higher speed lanes, those extra lanes and capacity are not gonna be around for them. Oh. Okay, so but how are they affecting airplanes specifically? And are all airplanes affected by the new technology? So we're still kind of working out the details, but specifically, you know, all wireless service works on using radio frequencies and radio airwaves, mm -hmm. uh, just like you would get from TV signals. These radio frequencies happen to run fairly close to some of the equipment that these airplanes use. And so there's concern that because they're so close, there might be interference. And the airliners, airline companies have, have clearly taken some big steps here in terms of canceling flights and making yeah. a lot of noise about this. And so... For companies like AT&T and Verizon, you know, they, I don't think they want to be seen right. as the cause of even more flight cancellations, which is why they've voluntarily decided to pull right. back on deploying around these airports. Yeah, forgive forgive my flippant tone here, but has it been tried? <laughs> like, has it been, you know, it seems we're talking about, like, might be, but wouldn't they have just, like, kind of gone through all of this already and really seen if it interfered rather than kind of go forward with a plan that they may not have really tested? No, that's a great question. The thing of it is, is this has been a two-year-long process to get this, uh, to get these radio airways and put them into work. I mean, there has been a lot of time for the airline companies and the FAA to make noise or to object to this, and so that's why a lot of folks are scratching their heads. This is coming at the last minute, yeah. just as these networks are getting turned on. The FAA and the airliners are making a big stink about it, and you know, wireless carriers have made the point that this is operating in 40 countries now, including. One airline that's canceled their flights, uh, Japan Airlines, JL, th that spectrum is already in use in Japan. And so there's a lot of folks scratching their heads trying to figure out what the objection is. Right now, we, we see the uh, Boeing and some of the airline companies have said that specifically the 777, uh, the 787, and I think one other regional jet is affected. It's a really weird selection because uh, these are a lot of the newer planes, and you'd expect yeah. the newer planes to have equipment <laughs> right. that would well, be able to be that would work with some of the, the, the wireless spectrum being put to use. Yeah, and that's just it. I mean, maybe this is too much to ask, but isn't there a way to find some sort of compromise? Can the airlines somehow upgrade their equipment to handle the 5G without any interference? That, that's a great question, and presumably that's the easiest solution is to, to basically upgrade the equipment, but that would require upgrading an entire fleet's equipment. I think... I suspect that's part of what's being negotiated with right now because it's there. There have been talks; they've been talking constantly, and, and you know I've talked to the carriers, and they're they're sort of frustrated. They have their hand thrown up. They're not yeah. sure what happens because it seems like every few weeks uh, they get asked to delay further this rollout, and you know so far they've acquiesced every single time. 
but we'll see how long this goes and, and what this drum is because it's there's a lot of uncertainty people still aren't sure what's going on and what that resolution exactly. is because even the airline industries haven't fully expressed what they want right but again you just mentioned that they have this in other countries have they had issues like have they had like outstanding issues with this and interference that's been the thing there hasn't been any issues the only other country that has similar restrictions is france and, and similarly they uh at and verizon had agreed to basically not roll out this service in zones near the airports but mm -hmm. right now the, the airliners are saying that's not enough and mm -hmm. we want larger zones around airports and we want we want the service to be basically you know, not so, turned on until we could figure out what the issue is. Just so I, your analogy with the with the roads was great. Mm -hmm. This is very similar, I guess, to like you have to turn your phones off upon takeoff and landing, right? Because it might interfere with something. It's a similar principle. I mean, the idea yeah. there is because you're on the plane, the threat or the risk of interference is so much higher. Yeah. And that's for anything, right? That's that's just not cell phones, but that's laptops, anything that has a signal. This is just, they're talking about the cell towers on the ground yeah. will interfere with the equipment. And so it's, it's so potentially a bigger problem. Okay, yeah. you know, I'm not a tech person. Me neither. I'm, and so I really want to thank you for bringing so much more clarity to what this issue is. Roger Tank, thank you so much for your time this morning. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.